Oakland, a city of a lot of different situations. The Oakland I grew up in was nothing but violence. Either you be a beast or a bitch. Oakland would try you one way or the other. You see what I'm saying? It says 409,000 each year at least a hundred people die, youngsters, not making it to 21. So I'm blessed to be here, 40 years old. I'm a triple OG. It ain't many like me left out here. Youngsters now killing the OGs, say they ain't listening. So the OGs move out to other cities, don't come back. And I try to come back, I tried to go to juveniles, I tried to come to schools in Oakland. They don't want Oakland to be safe. I always been like an eagle. I had the sword going against the motherfucking uh, rain, going against the wind. And that's what I'm doing. I'm telling all y'all, y'all can do it too. Born and raised, Oakland, California, man. Keep pushing, push for your family. Stop being stupid for your family. Stop going to jail for your family for your kids. Most of y'all watch this probably got kids. If you don't got kids, you out there doing something stupid that it, that's gonna end your life. So if you wanna be an OG like me, <laughs> you better wisen up, boy. This whole, this is Brookfield right here. This is called Brookfield. Everybody out here know each other and they kill each other. Now this store right here, oh man, a lot of people lost their lives. Did this gas station right here? A lot of people lost their lives. Just pedestrians going in there for the airport, go to get some gas, shootout happened. Damn. So this is where I grew up, this house right here. This is where I grew up at. Not no good memories. Had ch uh, chase downs with police. No, I had chase downs with police. Uh, had a case against the Oakland police. They chased me down over here and hit me with baton and all that in my head. So yeah, that's where I grew up. Here at my high school I went to, ninth grade through 12th grade. I was respected because my older brother that y'all heard me talk about in my other story, he went here before me. So everybody knew me as his little brother. So I had mad respect, you know what I mean? He was Valley Victorian, uh, Mr. Castlebot class president and so uh, I start off my ninth grade year kind of bad shaky shoot dice money hungry and so it was a few shootouts and some dice games so it kind of stopped me from shooting dice and focusing on football going into 10th grade year I did football wrestling track all league all we called it OAL uh, football wrestling track I was the man whatever I did I put 110 percent into so 10th grade, I got the job at the gym. That's when I started getting swole. It was over after that. I learned about high calories, eating a lot. So I got another level of respect. Oh man, you know, uh, I used to work at 24 Hour Fitness in San Leandro. Um, was there for about five years. Um, I believe Cali came in a little bit after me. Um, we started, you know, we used to see him come in, he was doing all these kind of acrobats, supermans, you know, different kind of exercises. So, you know, he came in and he brought a lot of uh, activity into the gym. You know, a lot of people were inspired by him, including myself. Like I said, I have no bad experience. My senior year, I was class president. Uh, I was Mr. Uh, the King of the school, Mr. Castlebot. Uh, graduate 3.83, full scholarship, academic and athletic to Fresno State. We had uh, went to college together, actually Fresno State. He was there for a year and then uh, caught some unfortunate circumstances that uh, led him to go to a different place for a while, to the pen, basically where he bulked up. And I always tell people when I uh, first, you know, Kali went to uh, Castlemont in Oakland. I went to Bishop O'Dowd right up the street from him. But uh, Kali was, a, was a, a DB. So he always had really big arms, but he was thin and fast. So when you see him now, he looks like a tank, like he was a lineman or something like that. But, uh, you know, he really swole up. Fresno State, man, we was out there kicking. It was only a couple of us from Oakland, probably about five of us. They actually, uh, the feds and the cops, that came to my house. I guess my roommate was with Kali when he, uh, you know, did what they did or whatever. 
And I don't, I don't think my roommate was with him, but he was with him afterwards. And so they definitely came to the house looking for him and that sort of thing. And then after that, I didn't see him until, you know, we came home and uh, we started lifting in the same gym together. But when he came home, he was a, you know, different brother spiritually and a different brother physically. It was a lot of shootouts in the courtyard and stuff like that. But uh, I was one of those people where people knew was going somewhere. So I was like protected by God, you know what I'm saying? I had to carry a gun, I carried my pistol because dudes was robbing people for their starter jackets with teams on it back then, and Jordans. When I got out of prison, I decided to body build. I came to this gym because it was recommended, and when I was a kid, I used to go to this church next door. And so I always used to see the gym owner, he was a tall, buff guy, I thought he was a giant. But when I got out of prison, I was 26, wanted to get into bodybuilding because everybody told me I had a physique to do so. And this is the last of the Mohicans in California. Last hardcore gym, man. All these other gyms I've been to, except the one I go to now in uh, Glendale, California World Gym, is pussified. This is the guy that got the, he got a, harsh and brass talk about himself. Uh, he come off as a hardcore dude, but that's what a lot of people need. Hey, y'all think I'll talk, if you wanna train one of the motherfuckers to train you right, and you can bear a man, a real man telling you what to do and not pussyfied, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, come on to the real place. Uh. That's what we do here, we get you in shape. We really, we really take our time and try to get that body balance and get you looking good and strong. That's what we want, you see how Kylie's looking and bend? That drive, that's what we get, we all about. You know, we, we gonna do it and we gonna get it. That's what we have. So I've been doing it for about 47 years. Now I'm an old man, but I still enjoy it. Enjoy it and like to see people like him come on through with everything so that we can show the young guys what they need to do. Because this is where the inspiration starts. Yeah, we show you how to start, where to go, and when. And then you certainly going to have some results every week, every month. And that's what we look for. I got the mind-muscle connection with my legs. Just got learning that I don't have to go super heavy. That's right. That, that constant tension. But I say, you was telling me in the beginning. Yeah. But most, we were so hard headed. Like, I understand what you went through, but yeah. the people on the internet doing it to me. That's right. And I'm <laughs> like, D was giving us gang. Like, I tell all, they already know. You told yeah. me to start doing those side laterals. Yeah. Sit your big ass down, nigga. Stop <laughs> swinging them 75. Grab these 25. I bet you can't do it. You yeah. and Charles Glass, y'all just yeah. to have that passion for all the oh, years. Okay. Like me, I don't I didn't like personal training. Right. But to see your passion and Charles Glass is just man. And it's like when amazing. somebody come on and do a show, that, that excites me like what? Okay. <laughs> exactly. All right. What's up man? We out here in Oakland, West Oakland to be exact. And this is the house that I lived in for uh about three, four years before I moved to LA. And this is uh, this is Market. If anybody know Oakland, no Market, it goes down, high speed chases, a lot of activity on this block. And uh, God had me covered, man. You know, I didn't have to go through too much violence over here. Had my wife, so I was real protective. Had my brother Bo to survive. So I was real protective over my family, you know what I'm saying? And so God had me protected. Hey, what's up with everybody? Got my loved one, Trey, with me, man. This dude right here, if y'all read the book, you already know, I just committed a illegal act, went to a shop. He eventually, after about two, three times, <laughs> let me come in there and work, man, and took me off the streets. And from there, my life went in a positive direction. And he ended up actually being one of the best barbers that I ever worked with as far as consistent there every day on time. Um, what he taught me was discipline, not, not with like drinking, <laughs> but with just consistency and then just discipline period because this man can do whatever he want to do and still get up, work out, do, and do the whole little thing. Yeah. I just got the remodel and this, this is the third one right here. Uh, 
the first one with the wheels at, it was, it was, I made more money with him in the two-man shop than I ever made cutting here, period, in the bigger shop. i much, I much rather this man be applying his energy and doing what he's doing now than to be out here on these streets, man. It, it get real ugly out here, man. I used to go to the gym drunk, fuck with him. I still gotta get my work on. That nigga had me on see, two fights. That's the whole thing with that discipline, <laughs> because I, I drank. I'm not finna do nothing but uh, flip the remote. He still go to the gym and still work out, do everything he's supposed to do. I, I always admire that, respect that. Thank you. Wow. It's, it's easy to just give up. Oh, you know what I mean? Wow. Not, not stay focused on what you're trying to do or allow yourself to be distracted by situations, people. You know, we done went through a whole lot of stuff just with the streets. But yeah. No matter what, you still worked out every day. Exactly. And I had to grab the pistol after the workout. Well, wow. exactly. <laughs> that, and that's what I tell my people in my videos that, nigga, I used to, I don't want to hear, I used to be on ecstasy, drink, still working out. 